I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about narcissistic tactics. You know, Margaret, a lot of people hear the term narcissist and they throw it around. All the time. Um, it's one of the common terms that you hear. Oh, he's a narcissist. She's a narcissist. And I think it's said more often than it's actually meant agree. to be diagnosed. I would agree. Yeah. Um, now, people can exhibit narcissistic traits. We can all do that. Because mm -hmm. remember, we all came into the world as narcissists because we didn't know there was anybody else. But, th but that doesn't mean <laughs> that you're a full-blown no, narcissist. No, it doesn't. And if you're a full-blown narcissist, it affects every single part of your behavior. Yep. Um, you expect everything for nothing. All right, you expect to be treated like a celebrity, whether or not you are. You expect to get the best of everything, whether or not you can afford it. And you're angry if it doesn't just magically come your way. All right? Yeah. So, um, again, yeah, I want to make it clear why this term is being tossed around so very much now. And I think it's not all that long ago that we fully realized that many, if not most, of the domestic violence men um, pretty much fit the, the criteria for a narcissist. And I'm going to continue to talk a little bit about their ta tactics and describe a little further how terribly destructive they can be, which accounts for the generalized anger out there at narcissists. Yeah, so it can be helpful for you to understand what some of their behaviors are and trying to determine, is this really a narcissist? I mean, sometimes it doesn't matter if they're doing these behaviors, they're, then you just Whatever gotta, they are, they're yeah. still obnoxious, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Margaret's got some good research here that we thought you guys might find insightful. Yeah. Think about a situation where you have a narcissist married to a wife. Okay. And you're in a couple situation which can easily devolve into an abusive situation. To make the, the victim easier to control, the narcissist typically uses tactics such as isolation, guilt, seduction, and gaslighting. And then we're going to go, go to a second part of that sentence. So, the narcissist will do all of these things to render his partner more helpless. Um, isolation. Numerous times, narcissists will try and separate their partners from contact with their family. Very common practice. From their friends from any other source of positive feedback. They try to make them feel guilty and blame them for any problems that there are. They will gaslight them, meaning that they deliberately try and um, distort their sense of reality. The last good example of that I wrote was the guy who didn't pay the electric bill. And so he comes home from work and the mother and the kids are there and they have no electricity. And um, the guy says to her, um, I paid that bill. And she said, well, you said you would pay that bill. You were supposed to pay that bill, but you must not have. I paid that bill. And finally he says to her, who are you going to believe, the electric company or me? All right. So he's playing with her reality. Her reality was you didn't pay the gas bill, the electric bill. And he's saying, of course I did. Why won't you believe me? Well, because the electricity is off. I, I don't believe you. Um, but gaslighting is trying to distort someone's reality, not nice tactics. The other thing is the narcissist thrives on making people feel bad about themselves, okay? And if they cut you off from any sources of positive feedback, you can get to the point where you begin to believe them. I am a terrible person. I am responsible for all the problems in this family. Mm -hmm. And then after they've really backed their partner up against the wall, they'll have a bit of a change of heart, at least seemingly, and 
do intermittent reinforcement, being nice and loving mm -hmm. and reasonable and a good family man to create the illusion of reciprocity in the relationship. So that's, that operates as positive reinforcement and makes the woman think, well, maybe he was right. Maybe I am responsible for all of the, the problems here. Look how wonderful he's been for the last month. Um, and just when he gets her into a sense of false security, he'll attack her again. Mm. Okay, pretty nasty stuff. All right. The relationship not only drains the host of physical and emotional resources, but it also alienates the person from his or her true self-preservation instincts and ability to maintain safe personal boundaries. In other words, this guy can so beat her down mm -hmm. emotionally, physically, possibly, etc., that she feels like she has no emotional resources left. And remember, he's isolated, so he's isolated her, so she has no place to go. Um, and alienates the person from his or her true self preservation instincts because if she's responsible for everything, then she really can't defend herself mm. against what she's being told. Okay? So it's a really miserable position that people are left in. Wow. All right? Hidden abuse. People who are narcissistic seldom make their antagonism transparent for the simple reason that they will suffer negative consequences if they do. Even overt narcissists who are more brashly superior and domineering than other types know that they won't get far in life if they fail to adhere to, or at least give the appearance of adhering to, some rules and social norms, whether the whether with acquaintances, friends, or family members. So for narcissists, it becomes expedient to mask their harsh self-interest and contempt for others and develop more socially acceptable strategies for getting what they want from their relationships. It is common for narcissists to cultivate an agreeable, generous, charming, caring, even pious or noble persona to attract a partner and win favor in social or professional context. So most of them have a very charming um, way of interacting with others to get what they want, okay? And it can be so good that it's hard to believe they're a narcissist. He seemed to be so caring of the members of my family, you know, and, yeah. and my family thinks he's just wonderful, which is another way to discredit the partner, okay? The disparity between the narcissist's public and private face mm. is one of the most confusing and dangerous aspects of this personality disorder. And there is narcissistic personality disorder, mm -hmm. okay? Well, you hear about these celebrities that seem to be so great in front of the camera, they're so funny and witty or charming, mm -hmm. and then you hear about their abusive life Their arrest the for press. domestic violence, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or their sealed court cases. Right. Or their sealed court. Yes. Oh, I like those a <laughs> that lot. They, yeah. That they've signed and paid a lot yeah, of money, money, so those but... aren't opened up. I wonder why. That's right. Um, that's a very good point. And that, that would point to a narcissist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This disparity makes the reality of the abuse for those targeted within families more difficult to recognize and even harder to call out. Okay. I'm so charming, how could you possibly think I did that? I don't remember it that way. Um, I didn't call you, you know, the four awful names I did call you. Yeah. Um, but they're saying if the public and private face don't match, and that's one of those cases, and I would, I've come across them fre frequently in my career. Yeah. Um, the family is a horror show inside the house and inside the family. All right, there's abuse and verbal abuse and all kinds of craziness. But the neighbors think it's the nicest family on the block, all right? Um, which means they have no boundaries inside the house, but a boundary around the house. So as far as the neighbors can say, they're just a wonderful family. And he's such a nice family mm -hmm. man, as he's abusing everybody in the house, all right? So if there's a big discrepancy between what he's like at home and what he's like outside, there's a red flag for you, all right? Yeah. It is important to note that forms of antagonistic attachment as a bioecological phenomenon normally happen between different species, 
not members of the same species. So sometimes, you know, you can see a mushroom sucking the life out of the tree, mm -hmm. um, but it's rare to see, you don't see it in the same species except in human beings. Interesting. Yeah, isn't it? Within the human species, regardless of culture or national border, such behavior is widely viewed as abhorrent. In psychology, it is categorized as pathological. In ethics, it is immoral. In mythology and religious contexts, it is evil. Mm. And there's a very good reason for this. Antagonistic attachment results in profound trauma that cascades through the targeted individual's lifespan and from one family to the next across generations and deep into our social fabric and institutions. Okay? And that's absolutely true. And I think we know that much pathology can, can get passed from generation to generation until somebody says, I'm going to work on this, I'm going to fix this, I'm not having any more of this. Mm -hmm. And it takes a mighty effort. Um, but that can stop the generational flow. And the irony to me is there's an ad on TV, and I think it's about a woman who looks like she's some kind of an executive, and she's looking for consultation on a decision, and you see a whole conference table full of parts of her. And that's practical me, and that's this me, and that's that me, and at the end of it they're all shouting me, me, me. So the irony is we've kind of become me-centered, all right? We've become narcissistically centered. Oddly enough, at the same time when we're figuring out narcissism, okay? We do need to take care of ourselves. We do need to look, for our, look out for our own interests. But there are other people in the world who will end up to be important to us. And the irony again here is narcissists want to be in relationships. So like so many people who are disastrous in relationships, just being a human being makes you want one, okay? And I think the prevailing attitude has been that these guys can't change. I don't think that's true. Um, but I'm not sure that, again, because we're so mad at them, I'm not sure we've figured out how best to help them change. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I tough have Tough stuff, say. Margaret. Yeah, it is. It's, it's ugly tough stuff. stuff. But there's so much about narcissism these days, I wanted to cover the subject. And there are more topics that are relevant, which I will look at in the foreseeable future. Yeah. Uh, it's helpful to take a look at this stuff and look at your situation and see if any of these toxic abusive traits are going on there because you know while many of you really want your ex back desperately we of course want you to do that if it can be something healthy right. and we don't want you to be mistreated or abused no. in any way shape or form and we highly recommend you get yourself a local therapist Absolutely. if you've been in an abusive relationship. Or right. if you suspect that you yourself are a narcissist. Um, it's a wonderful thing to do to get into therapy. You may have to try a couple of therapists before you find one who's really trained in how to handle it, but it can be done, all right? Okay. All right. Let us know if you like the topic and if you found it helpful. So if you want to get our help personally, you could go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Of course, Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you think I can be helpful, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.